What's up, gang? Kawaii50 here with yet another Fake Grand Order Servant Breakdown, and yes, I am here to talk to you about the servant I know you've been saving your quartz for. She has been ranting and raving and complaining about the fact that she doesn't have a swimsuit yet, and that was honestly with good reason. However, the dream has finally been fulfilled. I present to you all Okita the Jet Soji. We are going to be talking about Okita's best allies, craft essences, command coats. Listen, gang, I know there's a lot of you out there that intentionally waited and wailed for an NP5 Okita Soji. There's some people I know you think I'm calling you out. That's okay. I respect you and support your decision. And that's why we're putting this video out so you can make her all that you have expected her to be. So if this video helps you achieve that goal, be sure to go ahead and like and subscribe. Okita's deck contains three quick, one arts, and one buster card with an AoE quick type noble phantasm. That's right gang, AoE quick type, which means this is Scotty country my dudes. Her NP per hit is actually very good as well at a 0.92%. With three quick cards and one arts card, even though she doesn't have a steroid, gaining that NP isn't going to be an issue. She also has some pretty average star absorption at a 99. Her max HP is pretty good at the 10,366, but her max attack is surprising, especially considering her assassin class. I honestly expected less, but 9,337 isn't that bad, especially considering the buffs she has available in her repertoire. Okita's first skill is Jet Tenen Rishin Ryu rank A+. This gives her one turn of 50 to 100% increased critical damage and bumps up her star gather rate by 400 to 800%. This has the cost of removing a defensive buff from Okita, so uh, make sure you use this before you use her second skill or you are likely to regret it. This is also on a mercifully short four turn cooldown. Even though it has all of this going for it, you're still going to want to max this skill last. Not because it's bad, but because the other two skills are honestly really, really good. The Jet's second skill is Mind's Eye J, rank A-. This gives her a one turn of aid and one turn of sure hit. But the main reason you're going to be using this is because of the 10-20% to 20 increase to Okita's NP damage for three turns. Which is mwah, beautiful for three turn Skahawk Scotty looping. Okita's got you covered on that front. Make sure you go ahead and max this second, because the percentages don't go up nearly as high as what is tied to Okita's third skill. Her final skill is M Drive, rank EX. This increases her quick card effectiveness by 30 to 50%, but it also applies a delayed effect, decreasing her defense over the course of three turns, first by 10%, then by 30%, and then by a whopping 50%. And unfortunately for you, this counts as a buff, so there is no debuff immunity shenanigans you can use to get around this. You're just going to have to deal with it. When farming, this isn't really an issue at all, because you know Okita is going to destroy absolutely everybody before they have a chance to attack her. But when it comes to challenge quests and boss fights, that is when this ends up being an issue. So make sure you protect your jet. You're going to go ahead and max this skill first. For Okita's append skills, just go with mana loading. That starting 10 to 20% MP gauge is going to be very helpful, making sure you don't need a max limit broken kaleidoscope to farm with her. You just need a regular one, which is a little bit better. It can also be argued that follow-up technique improvement would be a good pick as well, increasing her extra card effectiveness all around. You might be getting some of those extra card attacks if you're fighting bosses, but I would say if you're looking for a reason to save your servant coins, you don't need to invest in this. If you do though, it's not necessarily a terrible idea. But there is something that might put a little bit of a pin in this plan. And that something would be Okita's Noble Phantasm, Jet Sandonzuki Rank C. This is a 600 to 1000% AoE Quick Noble Phantasm that deals damage to all enemies, removing defensive debuffs from them. And on Overcharge, it also decreases the defense of all enemies for three turns. So if one of them ends up surviving, Okita's follow-up attacks will probably take care of them. That is, if she gets a chance to take them. 
Unfortunately, this Noble Phantasm has a 60% chance to stun Okida for one turn. Now, this doesn't keep her from doing three turn farming. What this does, however, is it means that she is unable to initiate any follow-up attacks after her Noble Phantasm in the unfortunate event that this goes off. So if you have an enemy that survives and you tried to set up a Brave Chain, well, that Brave Chain is now no longer going to happen. So you just gotta be on the lookout for that. This is why I would recommend, if possible, get Okita up to NP2. If you go higher, that's even better. Every little bit of extra damage you get that can lower the chance of this ruining your entire run is going to be an incredible bonus. Okita's premier ally is, of course, Skahawk Scotty. She is a prime candidate for the Scotty system, and having two of them means that she is going to be able to be a three-turn farmer for you. If you're using her on other content, you can also sub in, say, a Wu Zeshan or a Bart Roberts, but it is not going to be nearly as effective for farming. There are, of course, other allies you can pair Okita with, and these allies I'm recommending are more for a case where you want to use her for a boss fight or a challenge quest. When it comes to farming, either go with the double Skahawk Scotty, or don't even bother going through it all. For our first lower rarity recommendation, I've got to pick out Asclepius, mainly because of his ability to increase Okita's NP gain by a solid 20 to 30%, as well as provide the entire party with an NP steroid. The debuff resist tied to his first skill is also really nice because it minimizes the chance that Okita is going to get stunned by her Noble Phantasm, so she'll be able to get in those follow-up attacks. For a freebie option, I would of course like to recommend Grey. Not only is Grey also an assassin, so she's probably dealing extra damage to whoever you brought Okita to fight, but she also of course has the overcharge bonus from Rongo Miniad, which can decrease the quick resist of all enemies for three turns. Go ahead and use Rongo Miniad, and then follow up with Okita's Noble Phantasm, and you'll get a nice little boost of damage. Speaking of assassins to pair Okita with, consider sending along Ushiwakamaru, especially if you're fighting waves of enemies, wave after wave after wave, and they all happen to be weak against assassins. Ushiwaka, of course, has an AoE Quick-Type Noble Phantasm, but this also has the bonus of decreasing the quick resistance for all enemies by three turns. So if an enemy happens to survive and the rest of the wave ends up coming in, well, on the next turn, Okita is going to be having a far easier job of mopping them up. If you're fighting mixed waves, you might also want to send Okita along with our beloved Maid Altar. Maid Altar, of course, can provide an attack boost as well as a quick card effectiveness boost to Okita in the same turn. But on top of that, you've also got to consider her coaching skill. Not only is coaching going to reduce Okita's skill cooldown by one, but it's also going to increase her star drop rate by 30 to 50%. Considering Okita has an AoE Quick Noble Phantasm as well as a stacked 3-card Quick deck, the ability to Quick Brave Chain is absolutely unreal. You're going to be easily getting that 50 stars you need to get a guaranteed crit on the follow-up turn. And finally, I would also like to mention Amor. Amor, of course, has the unfortunate thing where she steals 10% NP gauge from each ally each turn for 3 turns. But if you have an NP2 or higher Okita, this becomes less of an issue, because her Shroud of Valentinus rank A skill does increase Okita's NP gain by 10-20% to for 3 turns. If you manage to get off a particularly strong AoE Noble Phantasm and get a good refund off of it, that's going to be potential to loop again on the following turn. Again, this is better for boss waves, not so much for farming. Also, of course, you've got to consider Amor's Noble Phantasm, which can decrease the quick resist of all enemies by 20% for three turns. It is an absolutely great Noble Phantasm, especially when your teammate has so many quick cards in their deck. Of course, when it comes to Okita's craft essences, being somebody in the Scotty system without a personal NP steroid, you're gonna want a Kaleidoscope if at all possible. You can go ahead and get a non-max limit broken one if you're on JP and happen to have her a pen skill, but masters on NA are either going to have to deal with having a straight up max limit broken one, or they're going to need to be able to swap somebody in order to get Okita what she needs to NP on turn one. Of course, there are other options for people who don't want to go this route, and for players who have abilities to use Okita in other content. 
For a great freebie option, I would recommend One Summer, which grants quick card effectiveness, NP strength, and a starting NP gauge. Another great option is going to be Three Anglers. This sacrifices that starting NP gauge to grant Okita that critical strength boost instead, which ties in very well with her first skill. If you manage to pull Princess's Pilgrimage from the Oku Labyrinth event, that's also going to be a good pick for Okita because it's going to grant that quick card effectiveness, critical strength, as well as a starting NP gauge. And finally, if you are really, really upset about the potential for getting stunned off of that Noble Phantasm, you can always give Okita Vessel of the Saint, which gives her three instances of debuff immunity. That is going to be able to ensure you have three Noble Phantasms where you do not get stunned at all. And finally, we of course get to Okita's command codes. Her absolute best one in my opinion, considering her ability to be a looper, is Da Vinci Chan. Da Vinci Chan increases her NP damage for one turn when attacking using the engraved card. You have to use the card before you hit with the Noble Phantasm, but that extra damage is going to help push you into overkill and overall get Okita a better NP refund. For her other cards, I would recommend going full critical damage to get the bonus off of her first skill. Code Burst is of course your freebie option, but there are some other ways you can manipulate stars as well as increase crit damage to overall make Okita far deadlier on her normal attacks. For starters, let's talk about the one that carries fortune. You can only engrave this on a quick card for it to work, but increases the star absorption of that card by 100%. This ensures that stars flow to that card and Okita is able to get an NP refund as well as some stars generated. You can also go ahead and give her Majin Son on pretty much any card. This also has the star absorption increase, but on top of that it increases the critical damage of that card by 10%. And if you're looking for just a raw critical damage boost, look no further than Heavenly Child of Karama, which increases any engraved card's critical damage by 20%. Overall, gang, I do believe that Okita J. Soji is a welcome addition to the Scotty system of farming, and on top of that, she's not too bad in regular boss fights and challenge quests either. She, of course, ends up having some problems. The fact that her Noble Phantasm can stun her means that you ha might have turns where you don't end up getting follow-up attacks, so you've really got to make sure that you've got consistency down when building your team around her. I know some masters out there are going to be very upset about the defense reduction tied to one of her skills. I personally don't think it's a problem considering when players are building their teams, you want to try and protect your damage dealer as much as possible. So you're going to have targeted evades, you're going to have invincibilities, you're going to do everything you can to make sure the enemy doesn't target them. So for those three turns, I feel like a lot of players out there are going to be able to manage. Overall, I would say if you've pulled Okita Soji, especially if you've pulled multiple NP copies of her, then you have a great new ally when it comes to farming, a decent one when it comes to bosses. But I want to know what you all think, so let me know your thoughts about Okita J Soji down in the comment section below. Let me know if you think there's any allies, craft essences, or command codes that I might have missed. And also, let me know if you think she is your favorite summer servant of the bunch. I know a lot of people out there really like Hogita. I tried to go for her on the GSSR, but I was unfortunately unsuccessful. And I didn't get her this summer either. So maybe there is a chance for that next year. But gang, if you want to talk more FGO about any character, even if it's not Okita, my Discord server is always open. Huge thanks to all of you subscribers on YouTube, the followers and subscribers on Twitch, and the supporters on Patreon as well for providing me the support that I really need to be able to sit down and make all these videos for you. I really hope you're enjoying them. I'm trying my best to make content that I myself would enjoy. I hope I've managed to accomplish that. Anyways, this is Kawaii50. I hope you all have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you all in the next video.